Okay, you guys. Doctors and nurses are being asked to wear bandanas to protect themselves. And med schools are graduating med students early to join the workforce. It definitely hit me like, what did I just sign up for? Hey everyone, so I'm Bernice. I am a graduating post-matched fourth year medical student going into emergency medicine and I've also spent my time uh, getting a master's in public policy, so a dual degree student. I want to say a warm welcome back to my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, welcome. Welcome to the community. Hit that subscribe button and join this community. We are just getting started and we would love to have you along for this ride. You guys, times are wild. I never imagined that when I was going to be starting and entering the physician workforce that we would literally be living in the middle of a pandemic. Some of you watched my video from last week, which was the moment that I matched for residency. It was literally one of the most joyous occasions, probably in the top few happiest days of my life. Just so much joy, so much love. Um, and I am going to my dream program. So I am, I'm thrilled and I'm still literally on high from that moment. At the same time, all of this joy and euphoria that I feel with that, there are some other emotions that are starting to creep in because I'm realizing, you know, this, this is a pandemic and what I just signed up for is not like, this is not a game. This is very real. Um, and so one of those emotions that's kind of starting to creep in is fear. I'm actually going into emergency medicine. And so that is the literal front lines of everything that is going on. A lot of you may have already seen this clip from the New York Times, and it's showing footage from a hospital in New York City, which is currently the hotbed of the nation. We had to get a refrigerated truck to store the bodies of patients who are Dying. All of the doctors, it's hard for us to get tested even if we want to, even if we have symptoms. We're exposed over and over again. We don't have the protective equipment that we should have. I put on one N95 mask in the morning. I need to have that N95 mask on for every patient I see. I don't take it off all day. The N95 mask I wore today is also the N95 mask I wore on Friday. We're always worried that we'll be out of N95 masks. I want people to know that this is bad. People are dying. We don't have the tools that we need in the emergency department and in the hospital to take care of them. And, and it's really hard. I mean, it's just wild because this is happening in this country. This is happening in the United States, largely touted as a first world country with all of these resources. So I think it's been really shocking for people to see that, no, we are grossly, grossly underprepared for a disaster of this magnitude. And the scary thing is the the people who are bearing the brunt of this consequence are healthcare workers themselves. People like emergency medicine doctors, nurses, people who clean the rooms after environmental services, all these people are bearing the brunt of this underpreparedness. One of my closest friends right now is working in an emergency room in this country. And she sent me a picture of a mask that she is keeping in a bag. She's literally forced to keep this mask in a bag and she's been wearing it every day for two weeks. And she's been seeing patients with it and she's forced to do that. And so why should that be alarming to you? The thing is with these masks, a lot of times they're for one time use. When you're going in to see a patient who has a known airborne or a respiratory illness, you go in, you see that patient and then you get rid of the mask so that you don't carry that mask from patient to patient because that's, that's risky, you can contaminate other people. The fact that there is such a shortage 
of this equipment that people are having to rewear them. It's unsafe, not only for the healthcare workers, but also for all of the patients that they're trying to see and that they're risking their own health to see. Here are a few more examples of healthcare workers' testimonies of the links that they're having to go to protect themselves. And in light of this really unprecedented shortage, there are guidelines that have been released, including from the CDC, that went as far as saying, as a last resort, healthcare workers are able to use bandanas or scarves to protect themselves when they go see patients. To be just frank, this is shocking that there aren't enough resources for the people who are on the front lines doing all of this work to be protected. And on top of that, so there's there's a few emergency medicine doctors who I follow on different social media like Twitter and Instagram, and they have come out and said that they have been infected with COVID. Um, and it's scary. Some of them are even pregnant. Everybody has loved ones that they're afraid of exposing, but now that they have it, they're out of the workforce for minimum two weeks or however long it is gonna take them to recover from these symptoms. Overall, this is really scary because it's slimming down the workforce of people who can be there to provide the care that is necessary at this time. There is this desperate push to find ways to get more people on board. And so the most recent one that I heard, which really has kind of put me at high alert is that New York and Massachusetts have made announcements that medical students can graduate early and join the physician workforce. The first one that made an announcement like this was New York University. And in their email, they said, with the growing spread of COVID-19, our hospitals are inundated with patients and our colleagues on the front lines working extra long hours. We are still short staffed in the emergency and internal medicine departments. We ask for your help. The medical school and the university have agreed to permit early graduation for students who agree to begin working as an intern now. This is consistent with a national discussion regarding the early graduation of eligible medical students so that they can join the healthcare workforce prior to the typical July 1st starting date. And here's the other thing, please know that you do not have to be going into the fields of internal medicine or emergency medicine to join our physicians in the fight against COVID-19. You are also eligible even if you have matched at a program outside of NYU. And in the Massachusetts case, graduates will be able to choose whether to apply for a Massachusetts license or to move to the location of their residencies. Usually we don't start residency until July. And so the fact that these schools are graduating their med students in April for them to just get straight to work is indicative that this is beyond anything that we have encountered on our soil in recent memory. In all honesty, I had kind of mentally prepared myself for something like this happening. In Italy, for example, I know that they had kind of expedited the graduation of a lot of their medical students once the um, pandemic started really ramping up there. And as I saw it increasing its impact here in the States, I figured something like this would also be happening here. So in light of all of this, I have some personal hopes, dreams, pleas for everyone that's watching. First, we need to protect healthcare workers at all costs. And it's just, it's breaking my heart that people feel like they're going to work and they're giving, they're sacrificing and doing all of these things, but they don't feel like they can safely return back home and keep their loved ones safe, keep themselves safe. And so we need personal protective equipment. We need PPE. We need the ability to gown to have the masks that keep the particles out. If we lose our viable healthcare workforce, that is perhaps the most crippling thing that can happen to our healthcare system. The good news is we have a lot of people who've been stepping up. I saw an amazing GoFundMe recently that was um, mobilizing to get more protective, uh, personal protective equipment to healthcare workers, to hospitals. Even people who are sewing masks and donating them, there's a, there's a lot of efforts. And so we just need to continue in that and continue to ask our leaders at every level of government to prioritize this. And let me add to the chorus of people that are saying stay home. I know it is beyond inconvenient. It's just we are at a point now where 
If our healthcare system continues to get overwhelmed, healthcare workers are going to be faced with impossible decisions, deciding who is going to be allowed to have the last breathing tube that we have access to. That we still have people who are coming in for other illnesses, for heart conditions, for kidney disease, for all of these things. We are all part of the same pool using the same resources. And so if we don't have enough resources, even to just cover the coronavirus, a lot of other people in the population are going to be negatively impacted by this. And I know I started this video talking about fear um, and justified fear, honestly, but I also just want to know, I above everything feel really honored to be in the position that I'm in. I mean, I am still like sometimes I'm at the brink of tears when I think about the fact that I'm getting to train in my dream residency program in an amazing field, emergency medicine, and live out my purpose. I don't take for granted the fact that I'm even being afforded an opportunity to live so purposefully and, and so intentionally. That's all we can ask for sometimes in this life. And so I am beyond, beyond grateful for that. Definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up it definitely helps my channel grow and helps this community become even richer with time and you will get so much more content about life as a medical student life as a graduate student and coming very soon the life of a doctor working on the front lines of an unprecedented global pandemic thank you so much for joining and i'll see you guys next time bye